That man could have made an honest woman out of me. He could have. They call male ejaculate spunk. That's my man. I'm gonna flee to Europe and ride that bag of bones all night. I bet you thought you wouldn't see me so soon, huh? I bet you thought I was just going to ghost you for another four months. But I didn't. And here I am. Look, babe, I have commitment issues, but like not with you. Like you're literally different. Like, and that's what you don't get. And I do. I spend every single day trying to show you how committed I am to you, but you just don't get it. And it's like, I feel like you don't ever appreciate all the little things that I do for you. And like, yeah, sometimes like I do not like speak to you for like days on end, but that's just because I'm busy. And like you, do, like like you don't even get it. Like you don't even get how much I care. I know this is coming three months late. What did future say? Better late than never. Better late than. <laughs> I don't think that was a future song actually. Wait, 2023 was an interesting year. Interesting year. I did, in fact, just record a podcast episode um, spilling my guts and talking about the year that I had and how New York has been for me so far. Um, and it literally amassed to over an hour. So I will spare you the details in this video. That's not what this video is about, okay? We're also in a very intimate part of my room. This is literally my floor. Like, this is the rug. This is my Persian rug. <gasps> I was gonna say, this is where I put people in seven positions for seven minutes. Why would you say that? Books, TV shows, film, film, not movies, but film. What insightful, profound, slightly pretentious pieces of media have I been getting into? Let's find out. So basically the deal with TV in the Jess and MG household, how it goes is like, Mary Grace and I will find one week, one day of the week, it's usually a weekend, um, and we'll just watch movies, like for quite literally maybe six hours straight, but they're not good movies, they're all franchise movies, and it's because we pause and we talk and we literally talk for hours and like hold like little podcast sessions about these movies that truly don't matter like like whatever we literally watched we watched the magic mike franchise we watched the planet of the eights franchise we watched the 50 shades franchise oh the step up franchise also that's awesome and that is literally the entirety of my 2023 um i literally watched twice i watched the 1990 something movie hackers with angelina jolie like it's like <laughs> like this is why i don't have a letterbox because it would just be first of all it'd be inactive but it'd be it wouldn't be full of good, like it would not be full of good cinema. Absolutely not, absolutely not. The first movie is Your Name Engraved Herein. A Taiwanese coming of age film set in the 1980s. This follows the story of two high school boys, Jihan and Birdie, who develop a deep emotional connection amidst the exploration of identity and sexuality. As the relationship evolves, they navigate the challenges of societal expectations and personal desires. This film beautifully portrays the complexities of a first love, self-discovery, and the struggle for acceptance in a conservative society. This movie is so... Oh, so... I didn't cry when I moved to New York. Like, I didn't cry really at all last year. I should have. Don't get me wrong. But the one time I did cry, like, heavily was when I watched this movie. I was in bed, fetal position, rocking, 4 a.m., like, sobbing. And I was like, oh, I will cry myself. <clears throat> it's so sad. Oh, my God. It's so sad. It's very good. But it's so sad. And I don't think I will ever watch it again. And then I proceeded to get... TikTok is literally listening. Like, they're all listening. Like, there's people in our machines and our little phones and like ai will take over the world because i then proceeded to get a bunch of um your name engraved here when i didn't look for them i started getting them on my tiktok free page immediately immediately um for like days and days on end and it was it was it was very sad next up is a film called candy candy is a film that introduces you to dan and candy they're a young couple deeply in love but grappling with a heroin addiction guess who gets her into addiction it's dan anyway the film explores their tumultuous relationship as it spirals further and further into the depths of drug abuse and it highlights the destructive impact that this addiction has on both their lives but also the people around them. Through its raw and intimate portrayal, Candy offers a compelling examination of addiction, of love, and of the human capacity for resilience. I really, really liked this movie. I liked how it was formatted. I think there was a very clear and concise dichotomy 
um, between storyline and kind of like editing and cinematography. The entire thing feels very, it feels so light and it feels so airy. And I think like contrasted with their love story, like Candy and what's that man's name? Hubert. It all feels very balanced. It's very digestible. It's easy to easy to swallow even though you're watching a story on something that's so intense and so horrid and you know and i liked candy's outfits i liked her vibe i liked her vibe really really bad and i found their love story to be very 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 just like sweet and like really really pure even though oh i wasn't oh i didn't turn this on i found their love story to be very just like sweet and pure even though the things that they were doing absolutely were not pure <laughs> no they weren't they weren't they were doing heroin the next movie is on the beach at night alone so in this film we meet young he she's a young actress who flees to hamburg germany after a very very scandalous affair including her obviously broke out in south korea the film is divided in two parts the first part depicts her time in hamburg as she grapples with loneliness and reflects on her past relationships while the second part shifts back to Korea, where she reunites with friends and confronts the consequences of her own actions. Through introspective dialogue and very subtle performances, this film explores themes of love, betrayal, and of course, a bit of me, the search for the meaning of life. I really enjoyed this movie. Like, it's just a bit of me vibes. It's just like female lead looking for like identity purpose meaning in life it's big ups big ups let's add point five points that the uh, character's not white it was super easy to watch great dialogue great plot 10 out of 10 i feel like this was kimini's tea like i feel like she like i just know after her affair scandal popped off in korea she was like i'm gonna flee to some like tiny european town and i'm gonna do a bunch of drugs and i'm gonna do a bunch of like ashwagandha and do s with my geriatric boyfriend like she really said man fuck y'all that's my man i'm gonna flee to europe and ride that bag of bones all night my married boyfriend <laughs> Next movie we have is Uptown Girls. This is an early 2000s comedy drama that follows the story of Molly Gunn, played by Brittany Murphy. She's carefree, she's irresponsible, she's rich, 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 until those riches and her inheritance runs out. Then she takes a job as a nanny to Ray, who is a very precocious and uptight, traumatized eight-year-old girl. Initially, Molly struggles with the responsibilities of caring for Ray, but very quickly, they develop a unique bond that helps the both of them grow. As they navigate life's challenges together, they learn valuable lessons about love, about friendship, about family, about your inner child. Um, and this film blends humor with heartfelt moments, offering a touching portrayal of the unlikely relationship between an adult and a child. This is just really good. Like, it's a classic movie. I really enjoyed Brittany Murphy's outfits. Um, in the beginning, I wrote a little note. What did I write about her? I wrote a note immediately after I finished watching. I said, R.I.P. Brittany Murphy and her big, beautiful eyes that honestly freak me out sometimes. Um, otherwise, this is a beautiful tale on neglect and grief and that's all there is to it <laughs> yeah super good movie everyone and their mother has watched it the teapot scene where they're like spitting on the uh, on the teapot that hurt way 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 bad um the memes that y'all are making on tiktok and, and twitter are crazy and you need to stop you need to stop i'm gonna show you one that i that like personally violated me and i had to i, I had to turn to turn my phone and 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 uh, and uh, and uh, take a step and uh, and step out for a second. The next movie I have is Mona Lisa Smile. I'm not gonna give you an introduction on it. It's just a movie about literally a bunch of white women in college in like I think the 40s or the 50s. Um, they're going to Wellesley College. All the girls have their tea. One girl who's played by Kirsten Dunst, she plays such a good infuriating character. Like the way her mouth moved, the way she was talking to her, that movie pissed me off and i would have beat oh it would have been me and her in the courtyard i would have beat her but i think the the main movie follows um julia roberts who plays the professor who's teaching these young women and she is like 30 she's not married so they're like well there must be something terminally wrong with you like you must be a freak if you're 30 not married i didn't find it that significant i just Put it in this video because i wanted to mention the note that i put i put um this is literally what women did in the 50s question mark like is this what y'all did in the 50s like genuinely like i'm gonna get my degree but i'm gonna marry richard like you know 
that snot nosed boy that I've been dating for like a, a year and a half, if he asked me to marry him, I will say yes. Is that what we were doing? Is that what we were doing? What? But also the professor is kind of like trying to indirectly teach and coach these women through her work and her teachings and her lectures that there's more life than like getting married at the age of 21, which seems like my life. Help, help, help. I can't even get married at my big age. I'm too poor. <laughs> Couldn't dream of it. Could not dream of it whatsoever. Let's move on. <laughs> the last movie I have on here is Triangle of Sadness. Um, how would you even... Triangle of Sadness is a satirical drama that follows the story of two very attractive models, Bella and Felice, who find themselves... They take a cruise, but then find themselves quickly entangled in a complex web of ambition, power class and exploitation something way 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 crazy happens and then you are f follow what happens after i don't know how to describe this movie bro it was really good i really really liked it the poop scene that made everyone you know sick and queasy first of all you fr you guys are too like weak stomached i worked in a group home for like over six years I have had, it's truly made me like rock solid, like any bodily fluid I can conquer super easy, easy piece of lemon squeezy. I've been thrown up on, I've been shot on, I've been pissed on, I've, I've had blood on me, it's nothing. I'd be a great mother, it's, it's too bad I absolutely never want to bring life into this into this world. Um, lots of like allegories and laugh things like that, it's just like, it's like super multidimensional. Let's move on to television. Two shows in the new year really 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 did it for me one of them is the in-betweeners i found out about this show from a clip on tiktok i found it really really, really funny i looked it up you can watch the entire thing on tubi there's only three seasons and there's like eight episodes each which is really unfortunate because i love this show i love the show i love the humor it like sent me into a spiral on everything british I love, oh my God. Like I wish I was, I, I wish I was a Brit bro. I wish I was a Brit so bad. The way these people talk and like articulate and like, <laughs> like they pronounce anything, anything. I can't do anything. It's so funny. They call male ejaculate spunk. So funny. I've like cried, cried laughing. It makes me wish I lived in like suburban. Um, like England or London or wherever they were located. The next TV show I love, love, loved was Ugly Betty. I like the show. I like the show. The show also made me realize just how like thick and dense, full of like pl drama and plot twists, two uh, thousands television was. I cannot stand Betty, bro. I can't stand Betty. I hate a holier than thou like moral compass. So you should always do the right thing. Me, 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 me. I hate that kind of uh, you know main character. And unfortunately, that is what Betty is. She sucked. The way she mm. now when I tell you there is not a sensual, there is not a lascivious, there is not a sexy bone in my body. I truly believe that I am a male repellent. Like from my heart to hearts, I'm not even kidding. When I tell you the way Betty fumbled Henry, that would simply never happen to me. Henry, the way I would... Yeah! Yeah! Betty, you fumbled. You fumbled, you stupid idiot! And I'm gonna touch your hand when I say this. The way I would have catered to Henry's every need. It would have been me and him real bad. Okay, he could have fixed me. That man could have made an honest woman out of me. He could have. It would have been let me cater to you. Oh, it would have been me and him real. Me and him would have gone together so bad. So bad, Betty. Ugh. Like you cannot show me a sweet, nerdy, subservient man with big, beautiful eyes. Those big brown eyes, whatever you say beautiful, like, I don't know. Oh, you fool. Hey, fool, hey, idiot. You horny piece of idiot trash. I spent so long talking about Betty and Henry, so insignificant, and forgot to talk about why, like, the significance of Ugly Betty and why I love that show so much. For, like, a TV show set in the 2000s, I thought it was going to have very frivolous themes of nothing. But Ugly Betty very beautifully and like comically combines things like beauty standards, workplace politics, 
Um, I like identity, um, immigration and culture, sexuality, language, discrimination. Um, but it does it very funny and very easy and very comically. I already said that. The point is I digested more than just like Henry and going back and having to edit. It's embarrassing. Okay. I love, I don't know any of their name. Like I watch a show and I forget everything, but I love Betty's sister. I love Betty's nephew. I loved Amanda. She was kind bitch. Like you can, you could never make me hate her. And, um, I love the, the, the. Ooh, the Twinkie assistant. I don't know his name. Let's move on to music. I actually discovered a lot more music than I thought I did last year. For the second year in a row, Imogen Heap, the Speak For Yourself album. That is one of my top five albums. Like one of my top, 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 top five best of all time albums. That album is just a break. So many feelings and sentiments and sensibilities are captured in that album. It feels like silk. It feels like cotton candy. It feels like like condensation on a wall. It feels like spring. It feels like summer. It feels like fall. It feels like winter. Imogen Heap is such a good lyricist and composer. And she is like literally like such an like an innovative like you bitches aren't even using your 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 voice as an instrument anymore. She uses her voice as an instrument. Her voice is an instrument on top of her godly those godly you you ah I can like feel it in my bones. I love I love that album. I love that album. I love that album. Headlock is delicious. Wishes loose ends. I also really love hide and seek. Clear the area. Ah, clear the area. You find your way back home. It won't be hey. Just for now, literally. <laughs> but you know what we're gonna do? We're actually gonna keep the good vibes going. We're gonna talk about Imogen Heap once more. I finally got into the Fru Fru album details. Dreamy 2000s pop. It can't get any, 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 any better than that. So good, bro. Um, some of my favorites off that album are Flicks, I Must Be Dreaming. I don't know what falling in love with someone is like. I've never experienced romantic love, but if I ever fall in love and I would know what it feels like because it would have to, it must, it must feel like the last 30 seconds of I Must Be Dreaming by Fru Fru. I want you to pause this video and just play that song. I want you to play the last 30 minutes. It literally feels like, I, like, I don't know. It feels like Nirvana. It feels like it truly, that is kind of like what I imagine taking heroin must feel like. Like if I don't feel that, then I'm not in love with you. I'm just not. And I think that's um, quite literally T. I also really like Psycho Babble, Maddening Shroud. Um, did I say Flix? I love Flix. <laughs> I love every single song on that album. I forget who sh she's in that little duo with, but I love that album. Can we get another Fru Fru album, please? Pretty please! Pretty please! I recently rediscovered the um, album Recto Verso by Paradis. I uh, found it in high school and I haven't listened to it in years, but I listened to it again last year quite a lot. It's real good vibes. It's a really nostalgic um, record for me. I love mieux que tu. Le jury ve direction. Hey, hey, mieux. Contours. Instantante. Is that how you say that? I don't care. Or no. Very good, easy album to put on day or night. Whatever. Next on the list, I did in fact play Yeet and Cardi all summer to the point that um, when I play the Dilet album, I automatically associate it with the C train and my commute to my awful, awful, awful job at this like little restaurant slash bar that I worked at in Chelsea for like five months um, because I would just put it on every single time I'd go to work. And that was very, very often, unfortunately. Um, and I would have it just like drawn out my thoughts and I'd have it fully blasting, fully blasting. And it's good vibes. I think it's like late February when I'm filming this right now and Yeet just dropped a new album. I'm excited to hear. It's hard to hear what he has in store for me. He made that album for me, just for me, by the way. A little duo called Lali Puna, specifically the album. What is that album? I thought I was over that by Lali Puna. I realized I've been like really, really just into like electronica. I do in fact love stuff with a beat. Like I'm not on my ballad stuff. I'm not on for like the past two years when I put on music, it's truly to feel happier. Like. 
I need, like, I need music to feel happier. I need it to maladaptive daydream. I need, hang on. I need a, ooh, like, I thought it was good. I like the beat. I need that for sure. I, the phonem album by Chief Keef. That speaks for itself. Um, Fountain Baby by Amare. That's such a good album. Just don't think that that album made enough noise. I know Princess Going Digital is having its thing right now. And so is uh, like Angels in Tibet. And there's just so many just like African and Caribbean influences. She is coming to Brooklyn this summer or soon. She's, she's coming soon. And I will be in fact treating that concert venue like it is the club. And I'm so sorry for anyone who um, witnesses me there because I will have a few drinks in me and I will be acting like I'm at the nightclub. I've been listening a lot to Terica Blue. A really good jazz tracks to put on in the morning to put on at night lastly i became a shade by soul electronica band who was based in montreal they did break up now which sucks because that album is so good i like the line i like um haunt slash a line i like i'll put the tracks that i like on the screen um that's all for music let's talk about a few books psych we're not going to talk about books i'm going to tell you the books that i did really like last year i have three books coming up in um an upcoming video one of them i have the physical copy right right Appl thank you thank you guys thank you no thank you i really appreciate that because you, you guys know i never have that copy i am an az library warrior and i do that on my kindle thank you guys thank you thank you well, i appreciate that thanks giovanni's room by james baldwin um it is in fact not mine it's my friend karen's like it's been months now since i finished this i need to get back to her this is about an american man who travels to um, at 1950s Paris, he falls in love with a man named Giovanni. He is kind of like expected um, or faces the plight of like having to go back home and, you know, fulfill his duties, bring back manly men. <laughs> I'm kidding. Marry a, like, get with a woman. Super profound, super honestly like sad and depressing narrative oh 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 i'll say it. yeah i said it this just goes into a category of books that i ha um categorize as do not read these while the sun is still out like you cannot read these while the sun is still out like this is truly meant to be read um in the fall winter months um in your room at night sexuality identity race james baldwin is literally a magician a poet a wizard you like i don't have to tell you about james baldwin like who am, like who look at me james baldwin really hope you know what it is um the next book is heaven by miko kawakami it's just so good ah, it's so good there are two japanese students are facing relentless awful 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 bullying um but they find refuge in each other and it's just telling a you know about their stories i wish the book lasted like 100 more pages and i'm anyway whatever damn i'm recording for a really long time the last book is a happy couple by nisha dolan i really enjoyed this book i put this in my tbr it tells the story of i wish i could tell you those two people's names i would like i really wish i could i just how about you put, um put, um um put that in post please they are a couple that have been together for quite a while. I think they've been together for like over three years. And so when you've been together for that long, naturally, what do you what do you do? You wed, but they're still both they're still both really young. They're both under thirty. Um, I think they're both Irish, and it's set in London. Um, but the the um, oh the man's um her boyfriend her fiance um the man's name just he's a freak. He is a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Um, he's also incredibly just like weird and avoidant and he reminds me of me a little bit too much unfortunately I, I hate to say I know like most of what that man would say is unfortunately the things that I have said and also conversations he's had with past lovers I've anyway and so it's kind of just like a little game of cat and mouse it's a game of will they won't they will this couple that honestly should not get married will they get married you know um so families thrown into it ex lovers are thrown into it it's really fun it's messy it feels like something that would be adapted into like a normal people esque drama and i hey hey i'm gonna put money on it like seven years it will it absolutely will oh i've been recording for so long okay uh, now we're gonna talk about things that are like kind of like actually tangible this is my other um let me go get it hang on
did you really think we were going to talk about makeup and products like a bunch of little stupid girls just first is um this is you can't see this oh i think you can actually that says metalite this is um an electrolyte pill this is this, this is my lifesaver this has been my lifesaver okay first of all let's clock some real tea i have a hormonal imbalance i am severely anemic i have i know i have pcos i know i have pcos i absolutely have pcos a lot of the times i wake up feeling like hey dog shit like i wake up feeling so bad a lot of the time this has helped me not feel like that i didn't even know that like a body needed electrolytes and magnesium in order to not feel bad until i just kept on like i kept on and kept on and kept on complaining until my brother was like hey guess what you need idiot you need magnesium like you wake up and you get 10 hours of sleep but you still feel bad you need electrolytes like you need minerals i take this along with my iron pill every night and i wake up and i feel like so much better even if i don't get a lot of sleep i wake up and i feel i feel like an actual person let's talk about skincare i am not a person who like really cared for influencing or like any external skincare brands anything other like i just kind of stuck to what works and i thought everything else was gimmicky brave beauty you will always be famous okay crave beauty you will always be famous they sent me a uh, a pr package to try last year and they wanted me to like film and review it um but that's when i was i was moving and i totally i totally did not so they took me off their pr <laughs> list i bought this one myself this is great barrier relief it is a reparative skin soothing serum if you're a person who uses actives in your skincare if you have redness uh messed up skin barrier sometimes this is the truth sunburn anything this is it i since i use actives i use tretinoin i don't even use it that often but sometimes my skin barrier will, will just kind of freak out on me like like when you know you know like when it's red to the touch and it's irritating you know i whip this out like three days it's like i'm good and it's also so hydrating it's so hydrating i, I think there's like a like a oil in it or something i have um oily dehydrated skin and i'm very uh prone to clogged pores and closed comedones and this does well for me just i just make sure to like double cleanse obviously i talked about this in my last favorites last year this is um the premium lotion by hada labo this stuff is so 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 good it's taken hey a year plus um but i finally begin to notice like my skin changing like i've been using actives for a long time since i struggled with acne growing up um and hey guess what i would just not do hydrate i would put a <sighs> Dude, I would put on the most dry, 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 dry skin, and then I'd go and put on an active, and then I'd put on the tiniest little scooping dollop of, hey, guess what? moisturizer. Oh, you're sick. Oh, you need to go to jail. You're sick, you're sick, you're sick. And I did that for like two and a half years, like two, like maybe even three years. <laughs> i gotta right my wrongs like why like why would you be doing that and this has helped tremendously i've got like this is like my fourth um bottle and the fall and winter i used this one because it's thicker um i just bought a new one and then in the spring and summer they have a lighter version of this i use that when it comes in a white bottle this is concealer and this is a contour point is not these products it's the fact it's what these products have done for me i put on my uh, resolution list for last year that i wanted to like get good like better at makeup like i wanted to do snatched makeup like i wanted my makeup to be a little bit more like multi-dimensional and not give like you know eighth grader and i'm i'm working towards it i know you can't tell i know you can't tell with this um <laughs> I have um, concealer on, I have contour on, I have on like a full-blown lipstick. I'm still learning, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely still learning. And sometimes I got, <laughs> I went out with my friends last weekend, maybe that flashback was flashbacking. I put on a little bit too much concealer, just a little bit too much concealer. Keeping on the trail of makeup, no specific products really. I've been really, really, really into lip products. This isn't even all of them. Like this isn't even all of them. I, I have more, like I just, I love lip, I love lip stuff. Prior to last year, I did not put anything on my lips other than carmex or like a super super lightly tinted lip gloss and it's because i was just insecure about one the size of my lips i thought that like 
putting any kind of color on it would just make them look bigger and i didn't like when my lips look bigger for some reason it's just anti-blackness it's just internalized anti-blackness um and i thought i kind of like looked too done up but now it kind of like bounces out since i have like a whole face on anyway i have been loving lip product what i have on right now wet and wild cinnamon spice like i couldn't even imagine putting on lip like lipstick like this is a whole satin lipstick a year ago which is crazy now look at me doing the damn thing would you look at that and then i put like a like a like a brown liner around it, and then i put clear gloss and it's quite lovely if i do say so myself it's a little bit much i won't do it for like every day but it's like i'm here in my room it's just, it's just like it's just you and me Ooh, this elf lip plumping gloss in the shade um praline i am partial to a like a nudie pinky brownie or a red sometimes i'm not into berry i got like a lot of berry and now i'm just stuck with a bunch of the rare beauty lip oils i thought they did nothing they actually do do something i don't know if we're not supporting rare beauty anymore i know she said some did she say something like crazy stuff about Palestine? Girl, I don't know. I bought them way before. But these lip oils are in fact gas. I have um, Serenity and Delight. I have brown lips. Like my lips do have some pink in them, but they're majority brown. I didn't think this would do anything, but they do in fact provide a, like a beautiful light wash of color. They do provide a good um, gloss and they stain your lips after. So Judy doll in the pa and like, it's like a little pen and it's in it. The product pushes up it's really innovative this is like a very like beautiful um brownie nudie color asian brands really do such a good job at like uh formulating products that have a good amount of pigment but it's still like it's not too much you can just like put it on without worrying about that like worrying that you look crazy um and the shine is incredible like I don't know what kind of technology is in these things but you put it on it's not that shiny two minutes later baby it's glossy I love, j'adore. What can I say? I am but a stupid woman who finds happiness in makeup. What can I say? What can I say? Almost lastly, I got into fragrance real bad, real bad, real bad. Something I have been told a lot since I moved here is, you smell so good and I love it. What is that line from Snowfall? Like, like I love the game like i live for the game it started when i was at work one day and i noticed there is an asap store across the street from where i from where from my office so i did in fact go in i started chatting up the worker with my friend sarah come to, come to find out um he is a fan of the brand that i used to work for and the product i said baby don't you worry about it Bang! I can get you product. I can get you product. I can get you product. Absolutely, King. I ended up getting this um, Aesop perfume for like 80% off. It's This is a very... They, like This is one of the most expensive things that I own. I would never be able to afford this if he hadn't have, have hooked me up. The first one I got was Tacit. I love Tacit. Not everyone likes it. It's like a citrusy, peppery, fresh kind of thing. Um, leans a little bit more la masculine, but it's um, labeled as unisex. I really, really liked it. I'm going to whip it back out. When spring comes, don't you wait, don't you worry. That's just another example as to how I'm networking and I'm, you know, like I'm just so social and blah, 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 blah. whatever. If Sarah wasn't with me, I probably wouldn't have um, spoken with the worker that long. I have very bad social skills. This is Plus One by Okcha. This is like, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. This is like kind of like, it's giving sig um, signature scent vibes. I got a sample of Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume. I love, love, loved it, but obviously I'm not gonna pay $150 for like a bottle that's essentially like the size of this. I did in fact find a dupe. Okcha has really good, dude, none, none of this is sponsored by the way. Bro, that stuff must be like 100% 100% oil because it it's so fragrant. Like I remember like using my mom's perfume like when I was younger. And it was this brand and if i sprayed more than two sprays i would get a migraine because it was so strong and it would last like weeks on my whatever they make a lot of like um dupe replica kind of things the thing about not a perfume and this one too this is called plus one is that it's just only it's only one note which is ambroxan ambroxan is it's my it's one of my favorite perfume notes ever i found out about it from glossier you if you ever smelled you it's what is like it's like it's the note that makes it smell very fresh peppery and musky i would i would describe not a perfume and you know plus one this i would describe this which is ambroxan as peppery fresh 
papery. It smells like paper to me and a little bit musky, just like a little bit. And when I tell you the girls and the boys and the gays and the days, they love this scent on me. They can't get enough of this scent on me. It's such a good everyday scent. I used to call it um, suitable for the corporate nose. I remember I was at work taking my lunch and then I was in the elevator and the elevator stopped on a lower floor and a girl walked in she was like oh my god you, you smell so good like i can like like your scent has literally filled this elevator and i was like oh my god really thank you um because i it was like 3 p.m i couldn't smell anything anymore i have two joe malone fragrances here this is wood sage and sea salt and myrrh and tonka myrrh and tonka has been my jam diggity jam 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 this winter and then wood sage sea salt everyone and their mother knows what this smells like i'm not gonna tell you what this smells like but it's a great daytime scent it's what i want to smell like when i don't want to smell too feminine for the day last thing jesus these have been my tried and true these are prada riding boots i got them from the real real for like a hundred dollars i didn't buy a lot of the real real this year technically didn't buy these these were purchased from with a gift card that was um gifted to me from um my old bosses from my old internship i truly wore these like a hundred times and i haven't had them for like a whole year i they're so 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 versatile and they work for every season they were actually marketed as a size seven and i was really scared because i've had my flops with the real row and their shoes them i can fit look i can fit them oh your honor i think they don't fit no 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 get in there but surprisingly they're super roomy and they fit just right so it's actually like these were made for me <laughs> that's what i'm hearing right right that's what yeah 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 oh i told myself i was gonna come back to the channel with um intellectually stimulating and like profound favorites but then 2023 happened and that was just the weirdest craziest busiest <sighs> One of the most chaotic years of my life. Needless to say, discovering new media was quite literally one of the very last things on the list. It wasn't even on the list. It wasn't even on the list. Let's let's keep a spade a spade. I was just trying to pay my rent, okay? It was just me and that imaging heap album against the world. Quite literally. So those are all my favorites. It's a good mix. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. Who cares? I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not living my life. I'm not consuming. I'm not digesting for you, okay? 2024, however, mark my words will be the year that I put y'all on to some really, really oh, good okay. stuff, oh, guys. Oh, no, I feel it. Here. No, I, no, I learned.